it wasn't as scary as it needed to be. Um, but it's, it's certainly a memory I won't forget. But it's also tough going on vacation with Abby. The concerns, where's the hospital? Something happens, doctor mm -hmm. taking medications, syringes, <laughs> insulin on a plane. You always get worried somebody's gonna cause an issue with it, but. One time when Steph was in high our other friend Piper was there too, but Abby started crying and we called Steph and she said to have her test and she was 39 and um, Steph, she had to steal a Mountain Dew and she came out and then Abby drank that and she was fine. So I knew what was wrong and it kind of made me scared because she could like faint. Well, like this wasn't Abby's choice to have diabetes. She just had it and she asked to live with it. This time, I wonder what it feels like. Find the one in this life. The one we all dream of, but dreams just done enough, so I'll be waiting for the In terms of who makes a difference for Abby, nobody makes a bigger difference for Abby than Steph and Tom do. Just amazing how much they give to their daughter under these circumstances. Without JDRF, I don't know. You know Still be giving anywhere, injections. We wouldn't be anywhere near where we are now with the research. I think it's really important because knowing, like, if you have diabetes, knowing that someone is trying to find a cure for you. I think both of us are active in things that are supportive of, of JDRF in general. And um, we, we try to do things that, that uh, can help the cause, so to speak, because it's not just our granddaughter that has this disease. She started just with her getting up in the night and going to the bathroom. And really, it hadn't gone on that long, maybe, you know, a week or two weeks. And um, <clears throat> we decided to take her in and took her in thinking she was probably going to have a, you know, a bladder infection. And about six o'clock that night, our doctor called and said, um, you know, I hate, I remember him saying, I hate making this phone call. He said, I usually have to do this about twice a year and um, she has diabetes. Abby was six and she was so, so brave. I mean, she just had no idea how much her life was gonna change, but the rest of us did. And was, we were so, f I was very fearful and nervous. I knew nothing either. Um, we knew we needed to really read about it and find out about it. And we didn't have a clue what we were in for, I guess, as a family until we got her home and got started, your life just changes overnight. The fear is sometimes just overtakes you. I never know what's gonna happen. If it's either gonna go high or low, something bad could happen. Knowing that like something bad could happen to her and then she might be like at the hospital for a long time and I won't be able to see her. Uh, I get up in the middle of the night and test her every night. It's just, it's amazing how some nights you, you know, normally I wake up at three, but out of nowhere, you just uh, wake up at one and it's like, I gotta go test Abby. Something doesn't seem right. And you'll test her and she's 50. And uh, you just wonder, if one of those nights I don't wake up. We don't wake up till seven or six in the morning and I don't want to find out. I would wish that there would be a cure so I wouldn't have to do this every day and that sometimes dreams don't always come true but they do sometimes. Since Abby was diagnosed, um, 
some of the change, just the, the continuous glucose monitor, I mean, that's, that's all new. I mean, the thought for these little kids to think, you know, I might not have to poke my finger 10 times a day anymore. My hope, my main hope, is that they find a cure so she can just go on, live a long, happy life. Um, she's so smart and intuitive, perceptive. Um, she knows what she wants to be at age 11. I want to be a teacher. I just, you know, my, I just have always said I just wanted her to be just a normal little girl and not to have the responsibility at age 11 that she has. I just, I, it's a lot. It's a lot on a, on it. A little girl, a little boy, anybody to have to take on. Many of you don't have a family member or even know maybe much about diabetes and that's, we really appreciate the fact that you are our friends. Some people that don't know about like what it feels like to have diabetes, they still give money and I think that's really good. Everybody that's volunteered their time, their money, they've made it possible. I would say don't quit now. Thank you for anything you can do to help us find a cure for this disease. Thanks for donating money and everything they can help with. Dreams aren't enough. We want the real thing.